This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, we now bring you a discussion on India's sustained growth in bioeconomy. The participants are Harveer Singh, agriculture expert, and Gora Dhawallal, AIR correspondent. Mr. Harveer Singh, we'll be talking today about India's sustained growth in its uh, bioeconomy. Mr. Harveer Singh, for the listener, if you could just give us a brief insight, what really is a bioeconomy? Actually, the use of biotechnology is increasing in a massive way in all kinds of new developments and research, particularly in agriculture, in medicine, and even in food. So that's why the area of biotechnology is increasing. It is giving a lot of solutions as well as giving opportunity to increase the production on both the sides, on the health side as well as on the food side. So it is being estimated, sir, that our bioeconomy by 2030, when we have other SDGs also to fulfill, we have given commitments, 300 billion US dollars will be the size of our bioeconomy. You think it's an achievable target? Actually, the way India's activities in bioeconomy is increasing and the kind of trained manpower and new experts uh, we have, So I think it is an achievable target. It's not a big deal because, you know, in any technology, when you adopt and growth is always very fast, and particularly in new economy, I can say biotechnology is also, and bioeconomy is also a new kind of economy, like we see the next stage of manufacturing and development. So so when we talk of the bioeconomy, we talk about the production, utilization, and the conservation of uh, biological resources, which includes uh, related knowledge, science and technology, innovation, and all this information, products. So the whole thing, it's a very wide umbrella economy. But we see that there are small, small areas in which research and development, I'll say research in this area is important. Where is India positioned in terms of research? Actually, we have a very good pool of scientists and researchers in this field of biotechnology. And now industry is also adopting this route and a lot of bio technology based industries are coming up that's why we are very good into it and if you see that many even pharma companies and big giants are basically getting research done in india for their new kind of formulations and products and all for enzymes and other things so it is happening here in india and we have seen recently this we were able to produce this vaccines and even that the india is a kind of a production capital of vaccines to the world so these things are possible only through when we have very strong base very good expertise and required talent and the infrastructure for this sector in the country so and we are also well known for our innovation in fact when something is designed and developed scaling up is quite uh, easy for us, you know, we can really scale up very fast compared to the other countries in the world. That is definitely an advantage. Do you think so? Actually, government has also taken some initiative in this field to increase this sector in the country. Department of Biotechnology is also playing a very important role. And we have a National Biomedical Resource Indigenization Consortium also. So these kind of things from the government side, and that's why in this pandemic of uh, this COVID-19, a lot of support came from this side and the government is again giving impetus to this sector for a better goal because in future, whether it is, as I said, that uh, agriculture sector or medical sector, health side, we need this sector to grow faster, must have good strength and a lot of investment is also going into this sector. So it will create jobs also in coming days uh, in a big way and will generate wealth basically for the industry per se because uh, we may produce a lot of products based on the biotechnology or bioscience or whether it is biomedical and even in energy side. Also, there is a role of biofuel. So it is also a kind of bio. That's why we have a big spectrum to grow in this area. So when we talk of societal changes that are likely to be impacted and affected positively by growing bioeconomy, we think also of agriculture, the use of biofertilizers and all, and agriculture is an area of your speciality also. What is the role of the agricultural sector in India in terms of job creation also and a future growth in this area? The role of biotechnology is increasing in a big way in our agriculture sector. As you mentioned, biofertilizer it is eco-friendly, it is a green kind of thing, and it is good for soil health as well as the health of uh, human beings. So when we use this kind of products, and uh, many companies are now producing biofertilizers, farmers are being 
and craze to use biofertilizer. And on the other side, basically to develop new varieties and new, basically to be new varieties. The role of biotechnology is increasing in a big way. You see that now recently, if you go a few months back, government approved gene editing of plants based on uh, basically uh, new technology aspects. So that in that case, by using biotechnology, we can basically shorten the process to develop new varieties. And now there are a lot of changes, uh, challenges for agriculture, climate change, and uh, temperature suddenly goes up and down. And to create these kind of varieties who are basically resilient to these kind of disruption, we need uh, more and more varieties, but it will come through the use of biotechnology. And uh, whether it is genetically engineering crops also, that is also a way. Now government has just uh, recently approved this uh, mustard, and research is being done for many varieties. And it is not just for uh, to get more yield or better yield. It is just to create a better character in the plant for to protect basically unusual changes in the climatic condition as well as uh, to protect the plant from pest attack and uh, certain diseases at the same time to have a better yielding variety so that with the same power land which we have arable land in the country, we need more production per hectare. So it is possible only through the use of better technology and that technology is coming from uh, biotechnology. When we talk of modification and gene modification also to get better yields and more pest-resistant crops, uh, do you feel, sir, in your opinion, that enough tests have been done? Because opinions do come across that, you know, there's a modification. Is it okay for health? Is it not natural? How do we understand that this is natural too? We have two kind of approach. Either we should go for uh, uh, developing new plants and varieties through traditional method, so selection of the parental line and genes like that. And on the other side, you have some genetic things also. In case of like I told that this gene editing technology, there is no need to bring a foreigner gene in a particular plant. It remains within the same plant. So it is just, you can edit the genes as per your requirement, or you can bring from the same family gene to there. So that is more or less like a traditional kind of thing and that doesn't come into genetically modified thing because we are not bringing any foreign gene into the particular plant. On the other hand, then when we talk about genetically modified crops, definitely the scientists bring a gene from other plants and a foreign gene is there, whether it is from bacteria from soil or from other sources. But uh, then if it is genetically modified, basically two different kind of approach is there with mentioning. So, but globally, the GM crops are basically accepted, and we have seen a revolution in like cotton when we introduced GM cotton in 2002. But it was just to protect the crop; it was not for the yield. Now, in the mustard, it has a relation to the yield also. Definitely, there are two opinions globally, but we have a very rigorous kind of uh, approval process and data and research and. Uh, Basically, this experiment and to collect data from all the stages. So, expert committee goes through the data and information. So, that is a very rigorous kind of process we have. And it still, we also talks like now that without any proper approval or without completing the proper process, without providing proper information to the regulatory mechanism we have. So, only in that case, one can go ahead and even the opinion from different walks of life is also important for that because maybe it's a debatable issue and it will remain debatable in coming a lot of years also. So we are looking at tremendous uh, projected growth in the bioeconomy. Do you feel that we require certain changes in the subjects we are teaching in our education system, at least higher education, to make sure that we are bringing forward young scientists and more innovation in this area? Yes. In fact, if we see the recent past, that many new universities and colleges are the technical education institutes are introducing biotechnology as a subject, as a potential of uh, basically for better job opportunity. So it is going more and more. Uh, I think we are expanding it, but definitely we need a world-class kind of experts and system also basically because uh, there is a point that their credibility should not be compromised at any level because of a very sensitive kind of science. It is not just plain science. It is a 
precision kind of science and advanced basically level of science and uh, advanced category of science. It is not just in some normal science. So in that case, definitely we need a better education system and uh, even research facilities and uh, infrastructure must be world class in this area. I think that's very well put, sir. Thank you, because it is a precision science. In this, uh, we have to ensure because the impact can be huge. You know, minor modifications can have huge impact, long-term impact, and it's also setting the baseline for future generations and how future technology is going to evolve. Yes, that's why a strong regulatory framework is very important. And those who are part of the system, any kind of check and balance, and uh, to allow this kind of process to go ahead, must be very fair and uh, I can say law abiding and to follow each and every norm established for that kind of approval and to allow the product to move at any next stage level. You're right. There's a huge social responsibility element also associated with this, right, sir? So when we come to talking about, so this is in terms of how can production of eco-friendly ways and means be adopted by people Let's talk about the adoption process now. In India, we are a very price-sensitive market. We also know that, you know, we have certain ways and and, uh, certain traditional ways of being and change is not always easy. So do you think that uh, the scale and the production in terms of how can it be made so cheap and so easily accessible? Because price and accessibility are two critical things for gathering a critical mass to make sure that it becomes a huge success. Well, I mentioned that basically if production goes in a big way and uh, we have issues kind of production, it definitely reduce the cost of production and accessibility to the common man. And you also mentioned that uh, to manage it, it is also important. It's not just one way traffic that we are entering in big way for bioproduction all. At the same time, we have to take care of environment also. And for that, we need the norms how to dispose this kind of products and uh, so that there is no adverse impact on our basically climate as well as the environment and the human being. So all these things must come together so that we can take the benefit of the new technology for the betterment of the uh, human life and the prosperity of, and uh, the growth of the economy. But at the same time, we have to be very responsible and accountable to move ahead in this area. So in terms of how we see ourselves positioned globally, we also know that uh, in terms of bringing in green fuels, green energy, we're also working. Other countries are also working, especially in Europe, Germany and uh, Japan. They are the front runners in green energy. What are India's advantages in the whole bio economy? What are some areas of strength we have where we can actually be leaders? When we talk about bio, uh, there is a biofuel also and bioenergy. So, and definitely everybody knows that uh, India is a energy deficient country in terms of uh, fossil fuel. But the way we are producing more uh, bioenergy, like uh, ethanol is also a kind of biofuel. So, or whether it is from grain or from sugar cane, so we have huge potential. And government has come out with the special scheme to promote the production and to add more capacity and investment in this area so that we can reduce the dependence on fossil fuel as well as on import. So in that case, we have this opportunity. We have an ecosystem is getting uh, developed uh, in that way so that the industry also get benefit of that and we can sustain uh, more and more production in this uh, fuel area, biofuel area. So I think uh, it will add a load to our economy and uh, will save money for the government as well as eco-friendly in that sense, environment-friendly kind of theory. Mr. Harvey Singh, thank you so much for coming on to our program. It was a pleasure speaking with you, sir. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on India's sustained growth in bioeconomy. The participants were Harveer Singh, agriculture expert, and Gaurav Dhawanlal, AIR correspondent. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our YouTube channel, News on AIR Official. You may email your opinion about this program at airnsdtalks at gmail.com.